the Sire Russia Komoda. That's what we're going out on today. Bit of an unfortunate name, but it is a nice looking bike. And I've had this a while now. They actually sent it to me for a review and I've already done the review. Um, but I've been riding this around actually because it's based, one of the main reasons is because it's got so much torque and it's got a rack on the back, which means I can fit this cool Rock Bros bag, which is carrying all my drone stuff. And it's comfortable as well because it's got dual suspension. I'm not really a massive fan of this kind of setup, spring arm setup, but it is actually, it does the job. Right, let's get out onto the trails then. So this is the reason why I like this bike. It is literally just with a little bit of pedaling. I actually, I'm actually in the wrong gear, but that, how much power has that got? So it is de-restricted this bike. Um, hazard a guess, well, on the screen, it's saying somewhere around a thousand watts. Um, don't worry guys, this is private land, private land. So yeah, it's got bags and bags of power. It's, it's all really low down as well. I'm not sure if this motor's geared or not. I think it might be for this amount of power that kind of, you know, the torque that it's given out is, um, is one of the things that I noticed about it first of all um, on my little hill start test that, well, it's kind of like the test I just did actually, kind of like, you know, that sort of incline. Um, yeah, that was the first thing I noticed. As soon as I took it to another area where um, it had basically like that kind of incline, uh, it, was, it was really impressing me. I think it has got gear because you can kind of hear an initial kind of, I don't know if you can hear that, it's, it's like a little zzz as it kind of spins up. So yeah, we're out again on the trails. Last time I came through here, see, look at that, just powering straight up there. No problem at all. Um, it's, it's all done on the display, so you can just literally de-restrict it on the display and all that, but I'm not gonna go into that too much. Um, this one will only do 15 and a half mile an hour. It's actually running 250 watts. Um, I was lying about all that other stuff. So yeah, basically, there you go. Anyway, we are, yeah, just gonna head out on here, on this trail. Last time I came through here, it was, it was absolutely, oh, it was, it was so snowy, but absolutely beautiful. It was really, really nice um, out here. But um, this bike would have done really good. I wish I'd actually tested, tested it out, because uh, this would have done pretty well, because I do like these fat tires in the snow. They really do well, make it possible to ride in um, pretty slippery conditions. This bike isn't isn't actually that light. It's pretty heavy. Thank you. I haven't um, I haven't weighed it, but I would say it's probably one of the heavier bikes because it's got this kind of triple crown, dual crown, triple crown. Is it? I don't know. On the um, on the front there, the sort of like you know downhill looking suspension. So from the front, this bike it does look pretty mean. Let's just show you from the front. It does look pretty mean when it's coming towards you. But then as soon as you sort of get around the side, you realize it's actually a step through frame. <laughs> but, you know, that's not a bad thing. I've got my bag on the back and everything else. And, you know, um, it's actually quite convenient to ride this. I actually forget, I forgot to stick the stand up then. Um, I actually forget to, uh, I forget it's a step through and I just swing my leg over. So used to doing it. Um, but yeah, it's you know fully equipped. It's got mud guards, everything else. You know, this is the thing, guys. You know, you're getting so much really for I say you so much for your money. This bike is actually quite expensive. It's around two grand, I think. Um, but basically, you know, you kind of getting what you'd expect for that sort of money. Everything is kind of yeah, it's fully loaded. It's got lights. Um, it's got obviously your mud guards and. You know, decent suspension, front and rear suspension. So like the way this just glides over this surface, you know, it, it feels so much smoother than say like that Bezura thing. Um, the Bezura XF001. I do like that bike because it's it's kind of, you know, it's, it's, a good, it's a good bike and it's got a, a nice seat in position. And, you know, if you're riding it like a sort of moped, just twist and go kind of thing, it's, it's brilliant. On the road, it's amazing as well. Like, it, you know, it's really smooth on the road. But for off-road, it's probably not really designed for that. So this is kind of like a bit of a all-round, bit of an all-rounder. Bit windy up here. I don't know how you're making the audio's coming out all right, but hopefully. Weather's been absolutely disgusting lately. 
over in the UK, and it? I just honestly, it's just been getting me down so much. Not been able to get out, do stuff, um, and film the bike videos and stuff like that. So, what do we reckon, guys? What, you, what sort of content do you prefer watching at the moment? It's channel's going for a bit of a weird sort of phase. I won't lie. Um, I've always kind of kept it real and just done what I wanted to do, rather than you know rather than sort of like try and go for like maximum views or something i know i know i know i do clickbait a little bit with some things <laughs> or quite a lot but mainly that's just to maximize just maximize views on those subjects you know sometimes you just need to do it on youtube it's just a fact of life um otherwise you just don't get the views and this is like my full-time job so you know don't get views don't get paid basically um so yeah what do you reckon what sort of content do you prefer seeing e-bike stuff, drone stuff. It's really come down to kind of a few topics, isn't it? Um, oh yeah, thank you. Thanks. Nice chatty. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so what I was saying, you know, what sort of content do you want to see, basically? We've got radio stuff, we've got drone stuff, we've got e-bike stuff now. Obviously, not now, obviously started more with the e-bike stuff, but kind of gone into the other subject. Uh, what other stuff? Solar. I mean, I'm going to do some more solar stuff, I think, um, as sort of time goes on. But I kind of dip my toe in all these things. Anyway, bike builds and stuff. Steve's been doing a lot of different bike builds, so I've kind of left him to that. <laughs> um, all these different builds that he's doing, which is really good. Uh, but, but yeah, in terms of like, I think we need to do some modified standard, like kind of modified e-bikes like this thing, but just modify it. Obviously did the, um, what's it called? The uh, um, Engway. When I did the Engway, that, got, that was quite popular. The uh, 1500 watt, 2000 watt Engway bike just basically turning a folding bike into a non-folding bike and just giving it a massive kick up the arse. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that sort of thing. I've not pedalled at all <laughs> for this whole... <laughs> for this whole journey. How lazy is that? These are good as well. I got these, these gloves the other day. Just, um, I think they're called Gyro. These, are, um, these were actually a Christmas present, but they're, they're really nice. They're really good. They're not, um, they're not as crazy like insulated and you know if it's a really really cold day i'll probably wear the um the finsulate ones i've got or even like a heated glove or something like that like an rst heated glove which i've got but that's a little bit overkill for three bikes um you know so yeah i'm gonna come over here and i'm gonna fly a couple of quad copters over here and then uh and then carry on the ride but it is so wet, so wet out here. You might have noticed this bike isn't even fully charged either. It's on something like 54%. I used to be pretty anal about fully charging batteries, fully charging e-bike batteries before I went out. But now I haven't really got a way of, um, basically my kind of workshop, obviously I haven't got a workshop anymore at the moment. I'm looking to build one. But, um, yeah, it's not as easy to sort of charge up batteries, but you know, it's not too much of a problem because you can, no, look, no bites, oh, I better wheel it. Right, well that was a roaring success. I smashed a bunch of props up, broke a load of propellers. Anyway, let's get back to the trail. Might go for a little explore actually, over here. There's some areas where I haven't been. I'm gonna sort of check it out. So yeah, it is, it's so smooth. It really is smooth, this bike. I mean, it's sort of similar kind of setup to like the Vapor, I suppose. I was just talking about the Vapor with um, to Steve because the Vapor's kind of currently in storage. For those of you who don't know what the Vapor is, it's, it's my kind of attempt at making a really high-end um, electric mountain bike that just would just basically beat everything. Um, <laughs> I say beat everything, but you know, like. Basically, I just built this bike, the uh, the Vapor, to be kind of like a real top end um, electric mountain bike, but just with more power than 
um, you know, more than 250 watts. So you can spend thousands and thousands on like, you know, high, high end mountain bikes and are they worth it? Like, you know, it's sort of eight grand or something for like a specialized bike. We've done videos, me and Steve have done videos about this. But, um, you know, and you just think, where is that money going? Okay, it's going in on sort of a bit of design and, you know, the geometry and stuff like that. But mostly it's probably just funding the big machines, really, isn't it? Like the big manufacturers. So yeah, I might dig that out. Um, it's in storage in a minute. Oh yeah. And, uh, well, that is snaking all over the place. Uh, yeah, and get that, get that up and running again. Because there's been a few developments with um, motors, because basically what I'm using on that bike is the M620 Bafang motor, um, which is what the supplier that I get those bikes from is actually, you know, that's the motor that is used. But um, I wanted to obviously make, make it more powerful, so I've done modifications to it, of course as I do with everything. Um, so it was running a phase runner controller in sensorless mode. And it wasn't ideal because it did run quite rough, especially the startup. Once it gets going, it's okay, but it's the startup's quite rough. Um, but there's been a few developments. So see, the thoughts were either to just stick some hall sensors in the motor itself and just get it working with hall sensors that would be quite a challenge to overcome. Never done that before. Uh, or there are some other controllers that you can get now which utilise the existing sort of hall sensor set up in there. Anyway, it is a project and it's something, that, you know, would be worth doing. But uh, yeah, look at this water over here. It's absolutely waterlogged. It's a nice park over here though. Plenty to, um, plenty to ride around. I wanted to, this is like an old quarry, basically. Uh, it used to be a quarry, and they kind of turned it into a, a park, which is fantastic, because most things like this end up getting turned into human housing estates, don't they, at the moment? So it's nice to have this on your doorstep, pretty much, to blast around. So, I think we can go through here. It's not very easy to do on this. Yeah, that ain't gonna work, I don't think. I think they've done this. They've done this on purpose, haven't they? This is not gonna work. I think it goes anywhere worthwhile, so I'll just carry on up here. So yeah, nice smooth ride, 56% battery. One thing I noticed as well about this bike is it, it seems to, the battery seems to handle the cold quite well as well. Um, this is up here. It's actually pretty good. I quite like riding these bikes around because you don't end up getting filthy. Like you do on a mountain bike, you end up getting absolutely covered because you've got a bit extra sort of wheelbase with the uh, mud guards on as well. It's all good. Oh, I'm only on like three as well on my power level. Goes up to five, look. So yeah, I think what I was thinking of doing was going that one, that way. Just seeing what's up there. Some bits of the quarry which you should be able to get to. <laughs> Say that about getting muddy, but I'm getting absolutely trashed. Oh, it's sodden, it's absolutely caked. Who's this guy? Let's go up here, have a look.
Yeah, great bike, great multi-purpose bike. Does it all. Yeah, this is the bit, because it sort of like runs, you've got the, um, like the dual carriageway running over there. And I could see this from the dual carriageway. I'm sort of like, what? What is this all about? Can you actually get up here? It looks like you can. Pretty interesting places to, to fly, actually. That wood over there. Do some FPV through there. If I hadn't broken all my propellers. Oh, this is so wet. Heavy plant crossing. Yeah, cool. This is still, this is still like part of the part of the footpath. Hey, you could do some flying through here. That'd be pretty sick. How deep that is. And then out the other side. Yeah, you can literally go for miles. Oh, this will be lovely in the summer. Not so much in the winter. Some sort of like woodlands thing as well over there. Of a mountain biker up there. Yeah. <laughs> Bit hard work on one of them. Oh my god, we're getting completely soaked. Good ride though. Right, look at that water over there. Crazy. Back on the cycleway. That's what they're calling it. That's pretty cool. It's pretty good right there. I like it. I've not really come out of this far. But this is right on my doorstep. It's so stupid, isn't it? You just don't haven't explored it. Yeah, look at that! Ah, yeah, I've seen this. I've seen this bridge here. I've wondered how you get up here. So, yeah, nice to know. Pretty cool. Down at 34% battery. I don't know how accurate this, this thing really is, but. A lot of these battery gauges, like, kind of, kind of aren't accurate. Um, because they use like a, a kind of calculation based on the voltage that it's kind of getting back 
from uh, obviously the controller and everything like what it's reading out from there and it kind of does a calculation on you know where that would be in the discharge base of voltage where that would be on a discharge kind of curve of a battery which isn't the most reliable way of doing it at all really I've, I've touched on this before but like really kind of high end or not high end but like proper battery capacity gauges will kind of watch the amp hours they kind of you have to have like a basically like a shunt uh, which measures current and measures measures the capacity so you, you'll see what you're taking out it will know what you're taking out of the battery put it that way so that you can calculate a proper proper reading but that's like an actual like lake there i wonder if that was like that before this all this crazy rain that we've had but yeah i mean this this is just breezing this this surface like absolutely no trouble at all really good have to get a big bike out here <laughs> oh i know where we are this bit should do that little um little spin up <laughs> feel quite you know quite comfortable and quite planted on this bike it's it's actually handling everything well and i'll keep saying it but some of these kind of kind of like factory e-bikes oh that was gonna get a bit sketchy then some of these factory e-bikes can be a little bit you know not great but the fact that you've got the suspension on here is good so they haven't asked me to do another video on this bike by the way this is just me just riding it because i want to and i like it full areas this would be quite a good place for flying as well thanks I think I need to resurrect the vapour. I think it's got to be done. Start riding that around here. Be a lot of fun. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it here because I think this GoPro battery might decide to just um, die on me in a minute. So I hope you enjoyed this one. More videos coming soon. Let me know what you think. Leave me a comment. Catch you next time.